Welcome back to the latest episode of The Morning Skate. I am Clara here with the hockey guys from TikTok. We have David Kaplan, Jordan Martin, Lawson McDonald, Martin Yell, Austin Friesen, Johnny, last name isn't displayed. Hey. Um, can't remember if it's Blake Will or Will Blake, but we'll just go with two first names, Levi it's Cudmore well. and Troy McTavish. So thank you guys so much for coming on. This is actually the second time they're on the podcast because the first time it didn't record, but um, nonetheless, we're really happy to have them back. Yeah, if you have been on Hockey TikTok at all, you've probably seen them. They have now, I think, over 180,000 followers in just a couple months and almost 2 million likes. Does that sound correct? Yeah. Yeah, so you guys <laughs> grew up pretty quick. I mean, your first video had 65,000 likes. Like, what was that like for you guys? Just, you know, your first video already getting, like, this huge following on TikTok. Uh, it was definitely unexpected. I don't think, uh, like, for someone just to post one video and it, for it to get, like, over half a million views, that's not, like, I didn't post it expecting that, that's for sure. So it was just, like, a something that really kick-started everything that we've uh, done. And we've kind of just rolled off of that because if that video wouldn't have gotten the traction that it did, then like, I'm, I don't know if I would have asked them to do another video or maybe they wouldn't even have wanted to jump into another video because, you know, there's when you get 10 views compared to 500,000, it's a little bit different motivation to keep on making stuff. So it kind of just got the ball rolling for us. Mm -hmm. and Lawson you are kind of the brains behind uh the hockey guys TikTok operation so how did you like get everyone on board with um you know creating content um joining your group and just kind of making it into just a fun thing to an actual account where you guys could all like create content together probably a lot of bugging them at first it was always <laughs> throughout the throughout like the previous years just asking them to um make videos for my own TikTok, like my personal account. And uh, like, there's times where like guys would, like a few guys would have an idea and like want to make something. And uh, so like, that was always like this group here, they always um, would come up to me with an idea or something for my own account. And then it got to the point where I just wanted to make one for everybody so that, you know, we could all just make videos. It doesn't necessarily have to be me in them. I could film them and get these other guys in the videos. So that's kind of how like it went about with getting these guys a part of this group itself. I understand that you yourself are pretty creative on like social media and you have a YouTube account, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you just kind of merge that into like a team-based thing? Um, I think, I think the merge happened because like what people want to see I think is that they like to see what um, like what teams are doing. Yeah, it, it matters, I guess, what I'm doing in my videos, but I find it a lot more interesting when my when my content can just revolve around these guys more so. So like going to their houses and, and giving a, a tour of their house or like showing our interactions in the dressing room on the ice and stuff like that, because like personally, I rather film than actually be filmed. I'm not as like good in front of things as I am behind the camera. So I just like that spot way better just to be able to film these guys instead. And I like that now that we have this account and that gives me the opportunity where I don't even have to be in the videos. I can just have an idea, get, uh, get J March or Pacer to do something stupid. And then <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, anyone who's seen your content knows that there's a lot of you guys who love to be, um, in front of the camera and have that platform maybe if you're not the one editing it but yeah that's awesome so do you guys have like specific roles for content I know you kind of touch on this that you prefer to be the one like filming and editing and have some of the other guys um, you know actually like doing the stupid TikTok stuff that goes on on there um, I, don't, I feel like everyone's kind of played a different part in every every video uh, it, it depends really I know you got, you got Cuddy there, you know, if you throw him in something, then all he has to do is look good and we'll get views. So <laughs> Cuddly. Yeah, I know everyone. Yeah. Everyone kind of just does everything. 
Mm-hmm. You can get J Mart's in for a good dance, so you know you can dance. <laughs> Gotta hop on the the TikTok dance trends. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of TikTok dance trends, recently on one of your videos, Noah Beck, who if uh, you guys listening don't know, is actually one of the biggest TikTokers on the platform. He actually commented on your video something along the lines of, I'm getting roasted in this comment section, but you guys are awesome. Keep it up. So what was that like for you seeing like this giant TikToker on the platform? Like, um, I guess like acknowledge your content and, you know, kind of say like, you guys are awesome. Pretty cool. Um, It was, I think the first time that we all probably realized that we have like an actual fan base too, because like you said, like you saw the comments Mm -hmm. and, People were just saying, you know, hockey guys over Noah Beck, this and that. So um, it was a pretty surreal moment, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I guess just like give me an idea of, I guess, like when you first saw that comment, I know you mentioned last time that it was like someone sent it in your group chat or like your siblings and family like also saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say I was like, I was refreshed. Like I was waiting for it. I did it like. I wasn't surprised that he did because I kind of expected it just the amount of people that were commenting on it on Adam and then like the amount of views it was getting so Mm -hmm. I was like kept on checking my phone checking my phone to to wait for it and then I just and then I saw the comment I just instantly sent it to the guys and then (laughs) sent it to my girlfriend too actually because I knew she'd be jealous so (laughs) helped that a lot of the fans helped uh, like tag them and get them to see it too so that was nice so you got the comment, but not the follow yet. So next step is getting him, getting him to follow you. And we tried to challenge him to <laughs> the dice roll back at us. Mm-hmm. So he has yeah, you should it. challenge so him to off. match up on the ice yeah. or something. I'm sure, I'm sure the fans would love <laughs> no, to see that. We should probably work on our dancing skills first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I guess give me an idea of like the production value for some of your TikToks because. Um, I know Lawson, you said that you actually have like a camera and that not everything is filmed like on your phone. So just give me an idea of how you go about like editing and kind of producing that. Uh, yeah, like the production value can vary a lot just depending on the video because sometimes I'll, I'll use my camera. Sometimes we'll all use our iPhones and the uh, like I use the editing platform on my computer Final Cut Pro, which um, if you know what that is, it's just a software that costs cost some money so that's not free but I mean the the things that we really do the things that we really do can go off of zero dollar like besides an iPhone you don't necessarily need anything crazy to edit the stuff that we do make but I have it already so that's kind of what I prefer to use and then yeah just um pretty much the guys will send me videos and then I'll take it back here edit it and we'll make it into the TikTok that we want to create pretty much so how did you get into like video editing and how did you kind of teach yourself how to do that um I kind of got into it just from like a big hobby when I was growing up uh I just had a GoPro and then would go on vacation do travel videos and then every time I'd make a video I just learned something new I would look up a bunch of YouTube videos just teach myself things follow certain people that like I liked and then it kind of just built off of that. So like I've been watching videos and YouTube and learning about this stuff for probably over five years. So um, now I guess it's more so actually coming to um, come into life in terms of me actually showing people videos that I make. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the great things about TikTok is they actually do make it pretty easy to edit videos um, on the platform where uh, like other video sharing platforms like YouTube and Vine don't really give you the ability to do that. So I think that's really cool that you guys have kind of utilized that and have just such a range of like uh, production value for your content. And I think that's what makes you guys so popular is you have some videos like the gingerbread house one um, and a couple of the ones you guys like rollerblading where obviously like those are a bit more edited, but then also some of the other ones where um, it really just looks like you film those in a couple minutes and um, edit them in the app, got them up. But I mean, those are some of the ones that get the most views. So that's that's awesome to see that. Yeah, I think it helps a lot too, just having a bit of production value because people watch that and then they realize like this account, it's not a joke as much. Like I see some accounts and I watch their videos and 
like with whatever effects or edits they do I'm like you don't really know what you're doing or what like it mm-hmm. you can cut it yeah. kind of obvious so it definitely helps just having seeing videos over and over that actually make sense and then are just um you just get the idea of that they can make good content I guess mm-hmm. so you guys are um about half the team from UW Superior's uh, D3 men's hockey team so just give me a bit of an idea of how you guys get along and how you kind of become like as close of a group as you are and as we've seen on your TikTok page. I think it starts like from us playing against each other prior to coming here. Like almost half of us played against each other and knew each other before. And then kind of when we got like, I think uh, I started off by DMing Will on Twitter and I was like, hey man, are you going to UWS? And then, like I said before, like we used to be each other's biggest enemies and stuff like that. And we used to play against each other, but coming down here, you definitely, definitely changed us all for the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been kind of cool seeing how like the friendships have grown over the past year or the past two years for some of us, we all came in as freshmen and I think everyone except for maybe one or two guys didn't live with one another. And then now we're majority juniors and seniors and, we're all living with one another. So it just shows like how we've grown and become good friends and we'll continue to grow. So are there any like creative conflicts um, among you guys? Like, you know, one wants to do like this direction for a TikTok, the other wants to do this or kind of, I guess, how do you um, like resolve that? Or uh, I know Lawson, you're, you're the one who kind of does the editing and stuff. Are you like the tiebreaker for that? Or just give me an idea of how you go about um kind of dealing with like those challenges that might come up yeah I I we don't really have that um I don't know we I guess I've thought about that a lot like what um how that will look like when if guys have like a bunch of ideas but for the most part like Jordan sent me a bunch of stuff like Frizz has sent me a bunch of stuff and like I feel like the more it's not about like whether it's a good idea or a bad idea it, like the more stuff that gets sent to you or the more ideas guys have the more things they see um the better because you pick like if I would get 10 videos sent to me and I pick two of them like yeah those would be great ideas I don't think they're offended about the eight that I don't talk about right because and it's important just to not to for like everyone to know that too that it's just because I don't think an idea is good like it's really important to keep sending stuff because you can just spin ideas off of any any video that you see. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the guys think, think about it, but yeah. I think also like pretty much everything that um, guys have like sent to in, in like our group chat or like any idea that everyone's came up with. Um, I think we've pretty much gotten around to doing everything or like um, at least attempt to make it and see if it'll work or not. Um, I think we're all pretty good about that. If we have a bad idea or something and Lawson thinks it's, stupid or something he's not afraid to tell us that too like mm-hmm. and we just want to move on and get better at that because I've definitely given him some bad ideas I know yeah and Cuddy he, we kind of have dumb humor sometimes but that people don't understand so you can definitely so, tell when Lawson likes your idea because he'll send it in the group chat right away yeah yeah <laughs> and if he doesn't he'll like he'll be like yeah we can maybe make that work yeah we'll think about it uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. You know, you know the, yeah, you know the way it works now. Shoot. <laughs> yeah. We we all pretty great, much have great. the same sense of humor too, so like that's why I don't know. It kind of works too. Mm-hmm. And then kind of another thing that stemmed from this is like if you see an idea, like I like personally, like I've posted, you know, like three videos on like my own personal account. And I know some other guys have been trying to make their own videos too, and I think. A lot of that has come from like the encouragement that uh, we all give each other to be like, maybe we can't do this as a group, but like, if you want to do it, like, go ahead, like, see if you can make it work, learn how to do some of the editing stuff on your own and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like, know a lot of you do have your own um, TikTok accounts as well. So I guess if Lawson really thinks the idea is stupid, you can just go in <laughs> and put it, put it on your own account and see how it does there. Yeah, I take all the bad ideas and post it on my TikTok. So if you want to check out <laughs> Cuddy Seventeen on TikTok. <laughs> Aimless plug. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say too, like the the whole Mighty Ducks 
idea was David like that was all David's idea Mm -hmm. like he told me like he said we should reenact that scene and then I didn't even know what that scene like I I it's been so long since I've watched that movie that I didn't even wasn't even too familiar with it but then he showed it to me I'm like yeah we have to do that and then then we just kind of like I just kind of helped like build the like what it's going to look like but without him just saying that like he just, he told me that in the gym like some random like <laughs> that was even before too this hockey guys thing was well, oh no that was like right right, right, at, the right at the beginning that was pretty yeah. early yeah Be- yeah because it was so early that I posted that video on my own account because we didn't even think that anyone was going to see it on the hockey guys too so mm-hmm. and I another funny story about that one is uh we spent like what probably two or three hours filming that and then Lawson like puts it all together sinking all the lips and then right when we were done filming that we did the rollerblading backwards to that music video yeah. and you know the Mighty Ducks video did pretty well on Lawson's account but then you know the video that we took in 10 seconds <laughs> ended up getting us like two million views and we all thought that was hysterical mm-hmm. but honestly mm-hmm. like that's that's TikTok for you. Like, yeah. it's just, you could work so hard on one video and then something you just film in like 10 seconds blows up. But uh, Dave's still trying to crack the code on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Stats guy. I've been working on the algorithm. <laughs> Got to figure out the algorithm. Yeah. Um, so I guess, like, were all of you into TikTok before joining the hockey guys or did you kind of get on board with it afterwards? Because I know uh- recently, like, there's been some kind of stigma around TikTok, like, oh, TikTok's stupid. And like, honestly, like I was, I was guilty of that. My roommate's freshman year actually got me into it. Um, and at first I was like, this is stupid. This is so dumb. And now like, I'm literally addicted to it. So. <laughs> yeah, I definitely was like that. Uh, I tried so hard not to get TikTok and then well, Austin was always coming to me to make videos with him. So <laughs> I had to get it to check out what it was all about. <laughs> check out the comments i was kind of the (laughs) yeah (laughs) i was kind of the last one to join the group and i never had it and then after i think we filmed the video where it's like you have a choice go left or right Mm -hmm. and then after that night i downloaded it and joined the hockey guys and Mm -hmm. it's uh been an addiction from there yeah (laughs) i really and i think like especially with covid now you know we have a lot of time on our hands it's it's kind of nice sometimes Oh, yeah. yeah. To have it as a distraction. It's a good and bad thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my screen time has gone up about 25% <laughs> oh, yeah. downloading it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've gotten to the point where I, I hardly scroll through TikTok for entertainment. It's strictly just to see what, like, is to get, get ideas for our videos. Like, I don't mm-hmm. really, like, that's all I'm looking for when I'm scrolling now to see, like, trends that we could do or stuff like that, so... That's mm-hmm. kind of changed as we've gotten more into it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Now, now you have an excuse for it. It's a, it's a yeah. business thing. Spend yeah. a couple hours scrolling through TikTok. Yeah, I'll tell my parents that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a bunch of friends who actually like deleted it around finals and stuff because it just was like way too big of a yeah. distraction. But it, it is good and bad in many ways. So I guess kind of shifting gears here, you guys are um, D3 hockey players at UW-Superior. So just tell me a little bit about um, kind of your recruiting process and how you decided on UW-Superior because D3 hockey is um, pretty unique compared to like getting recruited for D1 hockey or like Canadian juniors. And um, it's really kind of something you have to have like another level of commitment for because you're not necessarily getting all the perks that you would playing like D1 or getting a scholarship. Um, And it's really something that you really have to be pretty dedicated to. I, I think for all of us, like when, when we were playing juniors, like we all kind of had those division one dreams and aspirations. And for most of us, we came pretty close, um, like close enough to just not want to give up and continue on. There's still a lot of opportunities to play. Um, professional hockey after playing uh division three hockey and um yeah I think for me like after spending a couple of years in Alaska I wanted to try and get back more towards the midwest and be home like closer to home so that's kind of what drew me to uh like superior so I don't mm-hmm. know. yeah I would agree I, and 
just to add on to what Cap is saying, then another big driving force in how athletes decide where they go, especially like the D3 level, is what the school has to offer, whether it's their actual size, the majors, and just like what they offer in the surrounding area. So like Superior, for example, it's got a bunch of outdoor like things that you could do, whether it's going for hikes and we're right, right on Lake Superior. So it's this like beautiful terrain. So mm-hmm. I know like, for me personally, it was, that was one thing that kind of drew me to come here is this, what it has to offer outside of the athletics. Like I, I played hockey growing up and I was kind of like the other, I guess, um, side of that. Like I did, wasn't really that interested in um, D3, but again, like as you were saying, it really did come down to what the schools had to offer. Like as soon as I stepped on campus on UW-Madison, I knew that like that was where I wanted to go. Um, but obviously like they have one of the best women's hockey programs like in the country. It really did come down um, to the school. And I think that's just something that a lot of young players Um, really need to give some thought to is kind of balancing, you know, where they want to play hockey and if it's worth it to maybe go to a D1 school where they won't get that playing time or play D3 somewhere where they'll really enjoy it. And it sounds like a lot of you um, are really happy with that decision. Yeah, definitely. Since uh, like this was the only school that I actually came and visited. As soon as I came down here, I just like, I just kind of like felt right. And I like met a couple of the guys that I had known from playing hockey before and the whole ride back to Winnipeg, like my hometown. I was just like, I think this is it. Like, and my dad's like, whatever makes you happy. So Mm -hmm. that's just kind of, I knew right away. And that's that's such a good like feeling to have, especially when you're making such a big decision, like choosing where to go to school for sure. Yeah. For me, yeah, I like, never really visited the school. Like, I never heard of it. And then, like, obviously, coach was calling me and stuff like that. But then, um, eventually, you kind of just got to check your e- – like, you kind of wait for a Division One possibly. And then you kind of just got to check your ego. And, and you got to kind of figure out for yourself that, you know, D3 might be the best option for you. Um, it, you don't get all, like, the, the glamour that D1 gets, but it's still really good hockey here in the WIAC. So – Um, I think most of us are really happy with our decisions. So I guess just give me an idea of what like a typical day would look like um, for you guys as like T3 players balancing school and hockey. And I know it's probably not that much of a typical day um, at the moment with COVID and all the restrictions for that. But like give me an idea of kind of what your your schedule would look like with practice and stuff. Um, Non like non COVID like last year, I'd say typical day is like school from whatever nine to three or four most of us all have meal plans in the calf so we'd eat lunch together at like 12 to 1 I'd say and then practice from 5 30 to 7 30 and then a workout too mm-hmm. the typical day you had school from nine to three or four that's a long day holy no it's like that's <laughs> the time frame that everyone has classes yeah oh, okay you got to take into our account, account our two hour lunches too. So yeah, yeah. two hour lunches. Faces. <laughs> the dessert table is the best part. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Are there any, uh, think... any nap time in there? No time. Yeah. No yeah. Time yeah. Frit- wow. Just coffees, coffees, coffees. Maybe and on even, game days. Even last nap year, in. even last year. And like, I don't play like hockey, um, in, like anymore, but um like I'd literally go home in between classes just to take a nap in the middle of the day and it was honestly amazing but Rich is the most productive he eats sleep and goes to school exactly that's what you got to do um and recently you guys actually had um your schedule announced so was there any kind of uncertainty for a while of if you guys would even have a season oh yeah it was uh like when we came in in August and, you know, we started uh, doing our workouts uh, later in September and stuff like that. Like it was uh, it was hard because it was everything was so up in the air. And, you know, we were working five, six days a week on the ice in the gym. And uh, at times, uh, you know, for most of us, like it feels like you're treading water and not really going anywhere just because you don't know what's going to happen. But, um, you know, looking back on it now you know, we pushed through it and uh, we have a season and we worked our butts off first semester. So Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's going to pay off. 
Yeah, I'm sure it was a huge relief um, to get that like email or whatever, um, hearing that you would actually have a season. So just tell me a little bit about like, I guess when you found out that you would in fact have a season and maybe like the relief you felt. Day, day before we actually were on a call with our coach and he literally thought that we weren't going to have a season. Oh. The next day we got the, got the word. So pretty crazy. Exciting. Mm-hmm. And um, it is a bit shorter of a season, about uh, 10 games. Is that correct? 10 games yeah. plus one plus, yeah. Mm-hmm. So how much more important does that make it? Like, um, you know, you don't exactly have this long season to really have like a developmental arc. I mean, you really have to jump into it right away. And I guess just does that like raise the compete level at all or kind of raise the circumstances? Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Every game just means that much more. And everybody, every team has been waiting for this opportunity to play. So I think the competitive level is going to be almost at an all time high this year. Like the first game of the season is like a playoff game, pretty much. So yep. that's how you got to treat it. What are some of your goals like for the season? Like what you're looking to accomplish, maybe individually or as a team or? Um, I think when we first, like, we were all freshmen together, except for a few of us. But, like, when we first came in as freshmen, uh, we were a young team. Like, our class was 11 freshmen, so we were pretty young. And um, at that point, the program, we were kind of, like, like climbing out of, like, a tough time. But now I think we're all older, and our expectations have changed to where, like, we're all expecting to bring our best games. And if we do that, then we feel confident that we're going to, like, be in good contention for for winning the WIAC, and then if there is a national championship, we're hoping to to get a bid there as well. So is it um like you're not sure if they're having the national championship for D three this year? Not sure yet because a bunch of teams aren't playing, so uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of up in the air. We're just focusing on our conference for now. I guess like does it kind of translate um on the ice that you guys are so uh close knit off the ice? I think it just like. The competitive nature just drives all of us to make us all like want to be better type thing. Like we're all so competitive, but we're also all such good friends. Mm. We're also all fighting for a spot, but it just like it drives us so much more. Like you see one guy go to the gym and then you'll see five more guys follow him after to go to the gym too. Cause he, it's just like, that's what we do. <laughs> like you'll, it's, it's awesome. That's the best part about it for me, honestly. Mm-hmm. I also think that we all, like, uh, we just all want to see each other succeed, which is, like, pretty cool. Like, there's no, like, animosity between guys. Like, mm-hmm. if someone's playing more than someone else or someone takes someone's spot on, like, the power play or something like that, like, everyone just truly is, like, really good buddies and just, like, if it's not me, then it should be him because, you know, he's my friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, that's such a great attitude to have um... – as teammates because like obviously you you want to have that like healthy compete that drives you to be better but you don't want it to get to a place where um you know you want to put someone else down in order for you to succeed but it sounds like you guys have like a really healthy balance of of just kind of pushing each other um to be the best could you just give me an idea of kind of like uh I guess your path to d3 hockey and a lot of you came from a lot of really different leagues. Some of you played in the AJHL up in Canada. Some of you played in the NAL. And how, like, you all kind of came together from these leagues across North America to play on the same team. Yeah, well, I, I could uh, tell you about my past. So I was a little different than a lot of these guys because they all played against one another, played in the same teams. I uh, I guess I didn't really know many people, at least in our group here. I didn't know any of them prior to coming here. And so before coming here, I played out in New Jersey. So I was – relatively far away and I was on the east coast and like Cappy said uh, I wanted to get closer to home when it came to school so that's how I ended up here at uh, Superior and I'm very happy that I ended up coming and turning that way it's, it's been awesome yeah I played in the uh, Ontario Junior Hockey League and um, when uh, Rich our coach first called me um you know I you look at the roster see where guys are from see where they take guys and it was nice to see a couple other Ontario boys uh come to the team and uh it was also nice seeing uh, a good mixture of both Canadians and Americans um so it's like 
makes it a little more comfortable coming into the transition. And then uh, when I got here um, last year, uh, me and uh, Frizz actually, um, you know, all these guys made us feel, you know, pretty well at home. And uh, there was a connection, like we clicked right away, mm -hmm. uh, just our personalities lined up, I guess. And um, yeah, and I've just been hanging out ever since. Wouldn't want it any other way, Johnny. <laughs> And I think, um, like you mentioned, it's it's kind of really interesting how recently there's been a lot more Canadians actually coming over to the U.S. to play college hockey because um, it offers such a unique experience where you do get to play hockey at a pretty high level like you would in Canadian juniors, but you're also getting that college experience that you would either have to wait to get or pass up altogether if you played like in a, a Canadian junior league. So could you just give me like the Canadian guys, just give me an idea of kind of how you, you made that decision to come over to the U S and play hockey. And if there was any pressure to maybe stay in Canada and play there. For me, it was, it was kind of because I, like I had a, um, I guess a dream to play in the, like the WHL or whatever, like that's all you hear about growing up. Um, but I was also fortunate enough to live very close to Grand Forks where I could go see those games as well. So kind of as soon as like I didn't get the opportunity in the WHL in that um, in that league, then I was like, hey, I just want to play like I want to play college hockey because it looks awesome. And I was always always big on like the education thing as well. So then my my gears just shifted to playing junior hockey in Manitoba and then just hoping for to play college hockey pretty much. And that's kind of why I just had my mindset on on that instead. I understand that COVID has made it a bit difficult for you guys to go like back and forth between the U.S. and Canada and with you know like the holiday this past month you guys had to like quarantine when you got back to Canada is that correct? Yeah whole yep. two weeks in the basement. Yeah. The petting zoo. <laughs> the petting <laughs> great, zoo. Great in the petting zoo. So what, what what was that like? I mean it was I'm sure it was nice to be home and be back with your family but probably a bit miserable those two weeks to not really be able to do much it's kind of nice being by yourself <laughs> to be honest just mm -hmm. I don't know, hang out watch movies all day do nothing it's a little bit different for johnny because he doesn't have homework ever so <laughs> <laughs> how does how does that happen how do you manage that oh it's it's easy <laughs> it's a beautiful thing <laughs> called being a calm major <laughs> yeah. hey 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 yeah. hey <laughs> I mean, I'm no, your journalism. Major, your so. journalism. It's different. Yeah, yeah. us com majors stick together. Strategic communication, same thing. Well, yeah. So he doesn't have homework, so he gets to sit in the basement <laughs> and watch movies all day, where the rest of us have, you know, ten to twenty page papers due at the end mm -hmm. of finals week when we're. In <laughs> so we had lots of time to do that kind of stuff and like finish yeah. off our semesters, which was nice. You know, com majors, we do have our assignments, but I will. I will admit that finals this year were pretty easy because all my classes finished theirs two weeks before our actual finals date. And, you know, all my friends who are like nursing majors and engineering majors were struggling with their tests and stuff. And I was just like, oh, I submitted an Instagram caption for my final. I'm done. <laughs> so I'm sure it's probably okay. Don't um, get me wrong. I'm sure I'm sure being a comm major is uh, really tough. But Johnny, Johnny is not the most, uh, you know, he's not the most um, academically motivated person I've ever met. Like he, he kind of just, like he, he procrastinates. Let's put it that way. Like I remember yeah, talking like to him in quarantine and he had, I had like two assignments due a day and then I FaceTimed him and he's, I'm like, dude, are you busy at school? He's like, I don't know. Let me check my schedule. And it was like a Sunday and he's like, oh yeah, I got one thing due on Thursday. It's just a discussion post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that sounds about right don't let him fool you though i still pulled a good grade so sure. that's what matters right and that's hey i mean matters. like are are you the guy who everyone turns to when they need their papers proofread no no no, no? <laughs> oh because for me it's like i i literally can't do basic math but i mean i can write a like four page essay in an hour so I mean, I've edited a paper before, but it was mandatory in one of my classes. Ah. <laughs> so we'll it was my own. You. We'll come to you if we need our paper proofread. Yeah, we'll see about that. So I also understand that surprisingly, there are a lot of transportation logistics majors on the team. Could you just give us a little bit of an idea of like what that even is or like what 
Yeah, me, Will, and Cuddy, uh, the people in the Zoom are transportation and logistic majors, and there's a few other guys on our team. It's, I would say it's one of the more prevalent business majors that not only our team, but the school in general would take if you're within the business school. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's just like the transportation aspect is how you're, what mode you're going to get a package delivered somewhere from point A to point B, so whether it's rail air boat so yeah it's pretty cool especially on this area because it's uh i would say especially since we're on lake superior it's a big hub for this major Mm -hmm. and yeah so it's one of the more prevalent ones i would say that guys in our team take yeah that's pretty unique i don't think i know of anyone at uw madison who's taking that so what what do you think is like your your future career path going into something like that I know Will's been talking about being the next Jeff Bezos. That's mm-hmm. his ideal. <laughs> I think that would be pretty ideal for, uh, for me. For I pretty much I, personally, I, I would like to live out in this area. So um, I haven't really gotten that much further than that, but something within the, the field for sure once I graduate. Mm-hmm. Always nice to have a plan. One thing I really want to bring up, uh, Austin, the cat. So um, your cat, Ollie, has made an appearance in a lot of your TikTok videos. And um, it's kind of unique to see, like, hockey players or honestly just, like, guys in general um, have cats because usually, you know, like, it's all about all having a dog, a big, tough dog. But here you are with a cute little cat. So could you just tell us, um, you know, kind of how, I guess, you made the decision to get a cat or if he's, like, your cat from home or I know like a bunch of you live together. So maybe like some of them don't like having the cat around or I guess just kind of the story behind um, Ollie. Well, yeah, like we had a cat last year and then uh, he was good and everyone loved him. And that was just kind of like a random decision. But then when we mm-hmm. went home for break because of COVID, there was an accident and yeah, he passed away. So in the summertime, uh, we were just talking and we decided that to get another one a kitten and then so I got in Winnipeg in the summer and then brought him to Superior so he's a dual citizen cat and yeah (laughs) just kind of fit in right away and just tossed him in a video and a lot of people were just commenting on the cat and yeah putting him in and it's worked out so far and he likes it all his outfit Mm -hmm. his little his little Christmas sweater is absolutely adorable so is everyone on board with the cat or some guys who are just like, keep that thing away from me? Well, <laughs> uh, sometimes he can get a little annoying or bite you or <laughs> that's something, but most of the time he's a good boy. Box. It's the clean litter box for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you say once a month? If no. that. <laughs> a little he's more. He's supposed to that clean that it like every bit. week. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, not the best cat dad in the world. <laughs> the worst thing he does is he uh, sometimes gets into the food. Like oh, told yeah. The other day. <laughs> he likes zucchini. Yeah. He likes zucchini? <laughs> avocado. Zucchini and un- uncooked rice. Wait, do you <laughs> say avocado? Yeah. That can be, like, kind of poisonous to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that just shows how good of a cat that he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think it's it's so funny that... I guess you guys have like your little group cat and that you said it was kind of like a group decision to get to get the cat no it wasn't it wasn't he <laughs> just didn't find himself he well last year when we good. first got when we first got Odin which is our first cat he mm-hmm. kind of was just like yeah I'm going to get a cat and none of us were like I think one David was on board because he likes cats and then I like the other two were kind of like I don't really care and then I was like I don't want a cat <laughs> because I had cats at House and Juniors, um, and they weren't that bad, but I, I just not a big cat guy. Anyway, so he went out and got the cat anyway, and then obviously, unfortunately, Odin passed the summer, and then again, he kind of just went to a farm one day or wherever he got it, <laughs> and then sent us a picture of it, and then was like, I might get him, and we're like, oh, okay, and then at this point, no one has a problem with it, but yeah, I'm still not the biggest cat guy in the world. Yeah, maybe um, I'll eat. Ollie will, will change that, but Ollie's a good Ollie's a good boy, but just like a boy. that's just like weird. I'd rather be a I dog, mean, right, Martin? Dogs are a lot of work though. 
like especially like traveling and stuff I mean who who like takes care of Ollie I guess when you're you're on the road or is he easy enough that you can just leave him alone for a couple days well this year we won't have any overnights which is nice but Mm -hmm. last year our uh neighbors would come by and check on him and hang out with him for a bit but that's not usually too bad so did you um take him home over break to Canada uh yeah Jordan actually brought him back for me <laughs> you stuck him with Jordan for uh, for break. Sick. Oh, yeah. his That's first cool. car ride with his uncle Jordan. He decided to get sick in the car. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. He was okay. Well, hopefully we'll we'll be seeing him in a lot more content. And I think you said last time that one of your videos got like struck down for community guidelines because you like threw him out of the frame. Yeah, yeah. That was our our first video that got taken off of TikTok was the uh the gas station challenge or whatever you oh, want to call yeah. it but yeah. the the skirt or the corvette Cor- <laughs> wait what do you i don't even know what that song is I, it's I think the it's the like song. cardi b song it's a yeah cardi b song. What do you want cardi? yeah yeah that <laughs> and then he chucks all the way out of the frame and martin <laughs> catches him but i guess it looked like he just threw him out the window just tossed him <laughs> go run away <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to get him like a little UW superior hockey jersey or something. He can be your little mascot for games. I just think that's that's so unique that like your cat is is a part of this content. And just like it's it's just really unique that, you know, a group of hockey guys have a cat. So you definitely love to see it. He's kind of carrying the group at this point, I, I would argue. And I, I think we, we definitely need to see more of him. Yeah, he might get a good video. <laughs> the group's getting a solo he might be in there for one. Yeah. yeah hey he's, he's he's a key member now <laughs> i would be so curious on to see how that would actually do if i just filmed ollie doing stuff like that'd be so random be but I, i'd outfit. be really curious to see what it like what it would how it would do yeah you gotta get him gotta get him like a little wardrobe some more sweaters sure. and stuff yeah. we'll get him we'll get him a hockey guy's shirt We'll oh yeah oh yeah if, if you make merch you have to make little little cat shirts for him and put the drip around his neck the louis oh yeah. yeah get him like a blinged out <laughs> collar <laughs> so i guess we'll transition to um a bit more fun questions right now so who out of you guys is most likely to oversleep and be late pace johnny Pacer. definitely johnny pace i'm gonna say austin Friesen. No, an honorary mention to Colton Bates. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. Well, yeah, I'll say Batesy actually. Frizz, Bates. Frizz gets up pretty early some days. Yeah, because he doesn't go to bed. Doesn't either. You're just <laughs> always waiting for Johnny. You're just always waiting around. Like, hey, bro, you want to go somewhere? Yeah, be in the car in five. Like, 15 minutes later, just walking out, hair perfect, nonchalant, hair trimmed up, just like just like he's not 20 minutes late. Smells like Versace cologne. <laughs> <laughs> needs his needs his beauty time. rest. <laughs> Glad you took your time. We're just going to get bagels and then come back. <laughs> never, Hold on, never I got a shower. Watching. Hey, but I mean, with with quarantine now, you know, it's like going out to the grocery store. It's like it's it's an event. Like, I mean, you gotta you gotta pick out the outfit, do the hair. Like, if you're going out now, you you, you gotta make it worth it. Yeah, I almost put on a tie for this Zoom call. So. <laughs> well, I I appreciate the the commitment for sure. So your second choice is that graphic tee. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big drop off there pacer oh this yeah. isn't bad luck home <laughs> little little canadian teams. yeah i guess with the cup canadians and americans on the team things are getting pretty heated with the world juniors right now or are you guys have you guys been keeping up with that oh yeah we really watched all the games yesterday yeah, yeah. yeah. and had a lot of pizza <laughs> <laughs> Correct. honestly i mean in my opinion world juniors are are like the best hockey of the year like it's just such an exciting tournament especially because uh i think like the u.s is a lot more competitive at that level than you know like uh in the olympics and like world championship they actually have like a fighting chance and especially like working for a college team seeing some of our guys on the international stage is awesome i know things get get pretty heated with usa and canada especially because it's not an easy tournament for canada to win anymore even though they probably will win this year but Let's see. So, who's the biggest academic achiever on the team? Dave. Biggest academic weapon. David Kaplan, CPA. Doing homework right now. Look at him. Yeah, like he's punching <laughs> up his calculator. Already. That's buried. 
semester even start yet? <laughs> Not yet. He's still crunching numbers though. <laughs> algorithm, that's why. Trying to break break the TikTok algorithm. He's your stats guy. Something so like who that. is um the best singer out of you guys? Uh Will Jordan, I would say. I'd say Will Blake for sure. Well, I don't know why you guys always vote me. Because oh. you got an angel, yeah. man. It's Fergie and Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Every once in a while, I'll meet up with uh, my friend Cheryl Crow off in Friesen, and we do a little oh, duet. Yeah. <laughs> That's special. It's That's the something. best duet. <laughs> we got a lot of karaoke singers. I don't know. Me and Johnny sing uh, Beautiful Crazy pretty good together, too. You guys, oh. is, that, is that your go-to karaoke song? Yeah, me and uh, Will crush Luke Combs. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's pretty hard. I feel like in karaoke. I mean, he has such a unique voice. They get pretty close. Like to that. you got it. You got to have some talent for that. Honestly, pretty pretty. Yeah, well, Will Will takes the cake. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. So, who is the most unique hidden talent? Mm. Lawson. Mm. Lawson's just good at everything. Yeah, he's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. <laughs> Jack of all trades. What would be my hidden talent though? Uh, uh, Pick something. Or, what, drones. <laughs> DJ. Drone, drone flying. <laughs> drone flying. Rubik's yeah. cube. Rubik's cube. Mario Kart. Puffer <laughs> fish. Yeah. <laughs> Puffer fish. <laughs> Just have done a lot of everything growing up, like learning little things. Not a lot of it, but just a piece of everything. So, just dabble, dabble in yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll just look I up mean, a song on his phone and then play it on the guitar like nothing. Yeah. So who has the best goal celebration? Mm. Austin. <laughs> only in practice, so it's the only time it ever happens. <laughs> yeah, that's the best time. I mean, hey, if you're not if you're not celebrating goals in practice, then I mean not trying. Yeah. <laughs> I like Johnny's celebrations a lot when he scores. Those always make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Hopefully we'll we'll see a lot of that um this season when you guys uh get back on the ice. Um so who is the best shot on the team? Like game is tied, you got a penalty shot, who's who's going out there for it? Definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not me either. <laughs> I, I, I relate, I relate. I don't know if it's anyone in this group. No, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not. <laughs> I've never lost in donkey. Marty loves the shootout game. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at the shootout game. Maybe me. <laughs> I'll go 19. <laughs> uh, if we're gonna pick anyone in the group. I I'll pick Tavor. He's got pretty good hands. Yeah, I wouldn't pick I, I, I think I'd pick Will. Yeah, <laughs> Will's got better. Will's better shootout than I am. Yeah, anyone's better uh, than me half the time. <laughs> I I relate. So who would make the best dinner date? Um, hey, sure. <laughs> Pacer or Yelly for sure. Yeah. I'd say Yelly's been he's pretty good. He's pretty smooth. <laughs> and he uh dresses up nice too. So I'd Yelly, say Yelly's the guy you want your daughter to date. That yeah, I would say <laughs> Yell. So who's the best cook on the team? Is anyone making like making uh team dinners or anything? Yeah, fridge or Austin Friesen by far. <laughs> But only He's for a- himself, right? Yeah, he only cooks for himself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and for a snap story, that's about it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes he'll do a meal for all of us. Yeah. Where he'll get out and buy a big meal and cook it for all five of us that live in the house, which is it's a usually always good. Yeah. Usually? Usually <laughs> always good. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty picky eater. That's why I said that. <laughs> Not a fan of his chickenless chicken. And I like <laughs> I like my chicken cooked. <laughs> How do I like my chicken cooked tower? He like it, he likes it like you know when you uh you know when you burn something right down to a crisp and then you your taste buds fall off. He likes, <laughs> it, chicken, like, he likes it like that. Brown it and like absolutely like grill that thing. <laughs> another uh another fun fact about Frizz's cooking is that he's the only vegan that I know that eats meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He claims to be vegetarian, but I see him eat meat at least three times a week. <laughs> is that is that true, Austin? Slowly transitioning. <laughs> that's, 
That's there's, how you do it. So are you like the, the nutrition guy? Not this week. Uh, <laughs> Raisin's all about you, health. I've had a bad start to the new year. Yeah. Chicken, hey, it's it's chicken still, early. It's still pizza. early. Pizza. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, both both of those things which are uh vegan. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess uh who's the biggest null beauty on the team? Uh, Alaska guy, Dave. Dave or Austin. <laughs> I'd go Dave. Then, yeah. It's a great league. The yeah. league of opportunity. It Dave is, put, honestly. Yeah, I'm being, yeah. So who is the best flow on the team? I know Yelly. you guys are pretty much all wearing hats and stuff, but. Right now it's Yelly. Yeah. Yeah, I would say Martin. We were uh, a little last flat night. today, though. It's stuck right now. His hair is <laughs> I slept up my forehead last night. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you slept on your <laughs> forehead? <laughs> How does this still like face down? Yeah. He <laughs> yeah, goes full plank mode. Oh my god. That's I feel like that's not healthy, but uh, <laughs> yesterday, yesterday we were watching some of Lawson's old vlogs and he had a beard and his long hair. And I think that was that was pretty grizzled. I think that would have gone down as a test flow. Yeah, lost lost Mine, the, this Prince Charming oh, yeah. thing. And he just yeah. slicks it back. <laughs> Might have, might have to bring that back uh, for playoffs or something. No, I don't think I'm ever going to have long hair again. <laughs> Too much work. Yeah. So who's the best cat dad on the team? Because I heard apparently it's it's not Austin, right? No, not at all. Well, yeah. Dave feeds the cat every morning. He changed the litter box. <laughs> well, I think Dave is. He's just a good uncle. <laughs> I, I care I care about my nephew. I just don't want to see him. Uh, I I just don't want to see him sad. Dave almost Aww. became a cat dad, actually. So yeah, I almost saved a stray, but uh, he had some issues. Yeah. Maybe maybe Ollie needs a friend. No, I think he does. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he no, needs a couple friends. friends. <laughs> he gets a don't give him ideas. He's good. Maybe uh. Maybe if there's there's another lockdown that can that can be your guys' new new project is get get another cat, a friend for Ollie. I mean, it would it would be good for TikTok views. Just saying. True. Like especially you got like a little kitten. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, you want to no, you want to sure. blow up even more. That's that's how you do it. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, I don't really care that much about TikTok to get another cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, we gotta do it for the clout, man. Exactly. Exactly. So, who has the best game day style? Never. Never. Good dudes, yeah. Handsome. Everyone dumb. dresses nice, though. Everyone's got good style in this group. Except for me. Chris has a 2002 NBA draft suit. Yeah, for Chris, <laughs> off this site called Light in the Box. Yeah, it's crumpled up under his bed right now. That's where he I keeps it. They're, they're, they're like disposable razors. You wear them once and you just got to throw them out. Oh, God. <laughs> With his diet, he doesn't fit. With his diet, he doesn't fit in any suits now. <laughs> Too much toppers pizza for the guy. And chicken wings on his his vegetarian diet. Mm-hmm. He loves chicken wings. Chicken wings and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> meat meat lovers. <laughs> slowly, slowly transitioning, right? I'll get there. Very slow transition. <laughs> I guess, like, with, with COVID this year, obviously, like, it's made um, college hockey look very different, but also school. So, how have you guys adapted to doing, like, online classes and, and just kind of, you know, maybe trying to get out of the house when it's pretty hard to? I mean, we're kind of in a hybrid mode, our school. I don't know if you guys are, too. Oh, we got we got shook on instantly. I had one in-person class one time, and then it was it was all online. Yeah, so we went the whole semester pretty much hybrid up until mm-hmm. Thanksgiving anyway. So yeah. it was still somewhat normal, but there were still some like some days where we would spend all day at home and then the next mm-hmm. day you'd have maybe one or two in person. So mm-hmm. the transition wasn't too bad until Thanksgiving when we all went home when then that was obviously where we were fully online. Mm-hmm. So for me, it wasn't too bad, honestly. Mm-hmm. It, it was kind of tough, though, because, like, we enjoyed going to school and, like, you know, you see all the boys and, like we said yeah. earlier, we eat in the calf together. Like, that, that's, like, the best part of our day. 
other than being at the rink with each other. So, mm. you know, it, uh, that, that was something uh, we all definitely missed uh, this semester. Yeah. And I think like everyone um, can kind of agree with that. It was, it was tough to do like zoom classes um, every single day, I guess. So uh, a lot of you are actually like in a lot of the same classes, right? For the most. Yeah. Yeah. So is that something you kind of like plan out? Like I know um, our guys at UW Madison will like make their schedules together and switch around classes so they can get, get into a class with at least a couple guys on the team. Is that the same for you guys? Yeah, we uh, we try to coordinate with uh, like the same times for classes, same teachers, just makes it easier, not only for us, like with homework and all that, but then and like studying for exams, but also for like practice times. If everyone everyone has like the same classes and it's just easier fitting the schedule in for hockey practice times and all that. Mm -hmm, for sure. Kind of starting to wrap up here. What do you guys hope that like the hockey guys turns into or is it just something that you're just going to see kind of how it plays out. Yeah, I definitely think we're just going to see how it plays out and hope for the best of whatever opportunities come out of it. But I think we're just having a fun time making these uh, videos and making content right now. And it's just good to see the feedback we be get, we've been getting too. So that just makes it like worth it with like the messages from people or the comments just saying how um, the videos make their day or like it brightens up their day or something like that. And it's just mm -hmm. fun to see that kind of feedback because that's that's really all we're getting right now like we're obviously we're not getting paid for it or anything like that yeah. so so Lawson I understand that you're a senior and you are um you know kind of kind of the one who's the most hands-on right now so I guess how do you plan to kind of like go forward with this account when you know you're not in school anymore but still probably very close with these guys we're trying to make them come back he has an opportunity <laughs> fifth year <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I, there's no plan at all right now, but mm -hmm. there's definitely options in the future, either because of COVID, um, there's an extra year that we get, so mm -hmm. I would, could technically come back for another season, um, whether I go to grad school around here or not, stuff like that. I mean, there's, there's options for it, and um, it's just too hard to say what is going to happen right now, so mm -hmm. I've, I really haven't planned on it planned on anything and just focusing pretty much one month at a time on it and whatnot mm -hmm. so yeah yeah and I think one thing that makes you guys so unique is kind of how you present yourselves in such an authentic way that's that's kind of contrary to a lot of the hockey content on TikTok like I, I know you talked about this last time but you don't do like a lot of the the stick handling and shooting videos or um, there's very little clips of you actually playing hockey and it's, it's a lot of your off ice personalities that I think people love to see. So how would you say like, that's kind of given you like a unique niche, I guess, in like hockey TikTok? Uh, I think that like that alone has been the reason why we've been just have seen like the numbers that we have is because everyone like hockey players tend to not really show this side that we're showing them. Like you don't see any of these NHL accounts doing TikTok trends like we are. Mm -hmm. And um, so by us doing that, I feel like it's just shown people um, more of a really raw side of us instead of just like a manly or on the ice hockey thing that most um, people think about when they mm -hmm. watch hockey and stuff. So I think that helps us. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, um, obviously like as we've seen um like your fans so far love it what's your favorite tiktok of ours um anyone with the cat wow what yeah. was your opinion you like on the that's a cop out yeah, oh the new one out. oh i i love that yeah that was awesome that was <laughs> honest i think i said like it's better better than i expected but yeah mm. <laughs> and um i understand that that was one where like lost in it it wasn't wasn't your idea it was like no, like yeah, I had nothing. Yeah, I had nothing to do with that video. Sure, sure, that was a proud moment for you to uh, see them all come up with their own idea and and create create some of their own yeah. own content. Yeah, we definitely, definitely felt pretty good when Lawson mentioned yesterday that he was proud of us. We got yeah. the, <laughs> we got, we got <laughs> the couple of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pat in the back. <laughs> nice to be appreciated. 
So can can we expect? Um, is there anything uh, short term in, in the works right now? Maybe coming this week or next couple of days. Um, today we got uh, actually yeah we we're, we have a fun little um, um uh, showing people what our majors are video that we're mm -hmm. doing. So kind of like sh when we showed our positions, when we showed our like just kind of facts about us. So we're doing a fun one with uh, showing people what her majors are. So something like that. Mm -hmm. Couple couple of fun facts in there for today. I know that's something you've been doing on, on pretty much every video. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's so cool how you guys were able to grow so fast and really kind of create this like brand for yourselves really from the ground up being like D3 players, you know, you don't have this notability that maybe like professional players have or even like a lot of D1 players have, like some of our guys on the Badgers, Ryder and Shay Donovan are, are really active on TikTok. Yeah, it's just so cool how you really found a way to showcase like your personalities and just, just you guys as a group. And it would be really cool to see what happens to next year, guys. And I'm so happy that you guys took the time to come on here twice and just happy that we could get you guys on here before you probably blow up even more than you already have. So I'd really like to thank you guys for taking the time. Um, it's been awesome talking to you and I'm sure a lot of our listeners will love to follow you guys on TikTok. You can do that at the hockey guys on TikTok and Instagram and follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Clara Bodet and uh, on TikTok at C-B-O-D-E. Follow the morning skate on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok as well. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you.